Hello and welcome to this AX ship build video. Today we're going to build a dedicated AX Maelstrom ship. The reason why we're doing this is with the deployment of the update 15, now we can go inside the Maelstrom and check out what's there. But the thing is, whenever you get inside the Maelstrom, you lose all your Guardian modules. So that is why we need a dedicated human tech AX ship, so to speak. So let's get to it. Um, and the hard points, we will have AX multi cannons only, four of them to be specific, and we will couple them with a beam laser, a long range thermal vent beam laser, and it will be gimbaled. The reason why is because we don't want to be focusing on keeping the laser on the goid, because we will use this one to, to cool the ship, essentially. So we will save ourselves from using heat sinks. Uh, for the utilities, we will have the enhanced Xeno scanner. Why? Because you need the Xeno scanner in order to see the hearts of the goids, uh, to be able to target them. Sorry, not see. And uh, that's why this is important. We will be avoiding a fight, but in case we have to fight, then uh, we don't want to be blind. We will need a caustic sink launcher. This is an engineered one. They can't be engineered anymore. I don't know why they did this, but yeah whatever but you will be totally fine even though this thing will be unengineered in your ship so don't worry about it that much i don't remember synthing this one or running out of ammo at all it, it might have happened once but that's probably because i was being a bit clumsy because it was my i don't know first time or something in the maelstrom so yeah as long as you know what you're doing you won't be synthing this one that much uh, the heat sink launcher here is a pre-engineered one. Why? It's lighter. Plus, it has one more ammo than the regular engineered ones. Uh, the heat sink here is a kind of an insurance policy because, number one, you will be facing um, you will be facing a heat spike when you're first entering the maelstrom. When you neutralize the maelstrom pulse, uh, you will have a heat spike. Your heat will go up to 200 and upwards. So you will need something to cool your, sh cool your ship. So uh, this heat sink is because of that. Plus, uh, you will be in the silent running almost all the time when you're around the, uh, the Hive ship or target mother ship. So yeah, a heat sink is a must. And you will, of course, need the Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer in if you want to get into the Maelstrom. Uh, this is easy enough to unlock. This isn't this isn't that bad. You only need a Grelic and Grelic is easy enough to get. So let's go to the core internal. We have a mill grade heavy duty deep plating again. Why? Because of this. The hard points. We need as much of these things as we can, as we can get. So uh, this is the reason we are using <laughs> this 87 ton massive armor. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of this because it, it makes me slower, plus it reduces the maneuverability, but yeah, whatever. Uh, we have to take take a hit on this one. And the power plant will be the armor power plant, grade 5 and thermal spread. Uh, why? Because we need to stay as cold as possible all the time. That is the sole reason. And why, do, why is it 5A? Again, let's check the power output. We don't need that much power, so why carry the extra mass? Simple. And the thrusters will be clean drive, grade 5 with drag drives. Why? Because of the heat efficiency. Let's check the heat efficiency of this one. The thermal load is 2.3 per second. So this is a massive thermal load. At the moment you hit the throttle, you will, you will see a heat spike. So you don't want to see that. You don't want to have that because you'll be in the silent running almost all the time. Again, I can't stress this enough. Being cold is extremely important. Uh, this will keep you hidden. The the silent running will keep you hidden. So that's why we go with the clean drive. Uh, 0.6 per second. This is a really good uh, heat for, for a cold ship. Uh, the frame shift drive, you will need the best one you can get. I had this one laying around, so I just slapped this one on. But if you have a pre-engineered one, that is much better than that. Uh, pre-engineered, double-engineered one. Uh, that is much better than this one. Plus it's a deep charge, so it will make me waste more fuel. But yeah, uh, I just had this one. 
the reason why you have you need a you know the you need the best uh, FSD you can get is because the maelstroms are expanding. So uh, you will be jumping at least like a at least two times in my experience to reach a maelstrom. Uh, so yeah, you need a jump. You need a jump capable ship. And the life support is pretty much standard on my ships. Uh, I go with the 4A life support or the, the best life support I can get simply because the oxygen in case my canopy is breached so I can have as much time as possible and then um, the modification will be lightweight you don't have to do this this is um, originally this is 10 tons I believe so this will yeah this will serve you well even in even in its original state so if you don't want to carry extra mass just switch to a D, D rated one. Uh, it will that one will give you seven minutes of oxygen. That's still enough time to get out of Maelstrom. So uh, the power distributor will be charge enhanced and super conduits. We don't need this one again, but just in case, I engineered this one to charge enhance the super conduits. I have fought with a charge enhanced and stripped before, and I survived that. So I guarantee you, you will be able to survive that. I'm doing this only because I want to. I want to keep my uh, pulse neutralizer charging as long as possible, in case I make a mistake. I mistime it, so yeah, this is the only reason. The sensor will be 60 lightweight. You don't have to go lightweight, but I do. Um, so just to save mass, increase straight line speed and maneuverability. Fuel tank will be 16 tons. 4C. Why? I want to save that extra eight tons. And uh, with the, with this fuel tank, I believe I can do three full jumps, so three and a half jumps. So that's about like hundred something light years with this FSD. So let's go to the um, optionals now. We will be using a repair limit controller, 5D, three 5D hull reinforcements with heavy duty and deep plating. Why? Again, hit points to max them out. Uh, Anti-corrosion cargo rack. This isn't a must, but it's a good it's a good cargo rack to have because if in case you want to carry anything caustic, this will help you with that. Uh, but a regular cargo rack will do just fine because you won't be, as far as I know, uh, you won't be able to get anything like uh, cargo-wise, anything that occupies your cargo space from the uh, mothership right now, the, or the hive ship right now. So. Yeah, this is just a just this is just a precaution. The auto field maintenance units will be three B. Why? Because of repair capacity. You'll be repairing a lot of your modules inside the maelstrom, so you need this one definitely. Uh, the repair capacity is better than the three A. The only downside being uh, the re the repair rating. So that's the only problem. It repairs a tiny bit slower, but it repairs more. So. The module reinforcement packages 3D, 2D, 1D. Why? Damage protection stacks up to almost 94%. So, and they won't be fried by the Maelstrom's effect. So, yeah, we have to use these ones, kind of. We can't avoid the, these. So, yeah, that'll be it. And one last, uh, one last uh, thing that I want to discuss here: the repair limpet uh, plus the uh, I mean, sorry, the repair limpet versus the uh, multi-purpose Xeno limpet. The multi-purpose Xeno limpet is definitely a good thing to have if you're gathering anything uh, with your research limpet. But there is a problem. There is nothing to be gathered as, uh, from the hive ship as of now with the research limpet because you can't even scan anything. So there is no uh, limpet, docking, limpet docking space for a research limit to dock on. So as long as you're not gathering these caustic tissue samples, etc., uh, you won't be needing that. And for the hive ship thing, the research limit being useless, if it is useless, sorry, if it is useful, uh, if you can use your research limits on the hive ship, if there's something I don't know happened, if there's a new discovery happening. So yeah, feel free to switch one of these uh, module reinforcements with the uh, Xeno limpet and get a 5D module reinforcement instead. That will be the only difference. And 
Another reason why I'm not using that Xeno multipurpose Xeno limpet controller is because its repair capacity is absolutely abysmal. So let me show you here. There we go. This is the best one. Uh, it's 10 tons, by the way. It's heavier than the regular one, the 5D repair limpet one. The repair capacity is 70. This is basically useless uh, for a ship like a crate. But on the other hand, the 5D controller repair capacity is 310. So instead of wasting your limpets, I suggest just going with the repair limpet controller. So that will be that. And uh, I don't think I have anything to anything else to add on this build. The only thing that I want to discuss before ending the video is how you're going to be using this ship. Uh, the speed is about 500, 499, let's say, let's just give it 500. You won't be able to outrun a basilisk during your high prediction, but in the high predictions, you will have enough time to outrun the bazi and just get out of there. So this is not that big of a problem. So this is the only downside of this ship. And we, again, we have to have that because we need to stay cold. Yeah, I think that is it. Uh, this brings us to the end of this video. And thank you for watching. And I hope that the ship serves you well in the Maelstrom. I will be testing the ship and uh, recording some footage with it. Uh, so stay tuned if you want to see me testing it. Again, thanks for watching. And I hope to see you on the next one.